Hi guys, uh, Brian with Half Baked Powder Coating. Wanted to make a little video because I see a lot of people online talking about buying rental properties and commercial properties and you know renting them out and making millions of dollars. And I just wanted to give my two cents on the whole situation. Uh, I see in the comments sections of these posts and videos that uh, people are like, "Oh, it's a scam. It doesn't really work." You know, you you there's no way to do that. And I'll tell you flat out that's a lie. Um, it's actually a lot easier than people think. Now, the first thing that people don't realize is, yeah, you got to work your ass off and you might have to crunch, you know, crunch your life down, um, you know, live on top ramen noodles if you have to for a while and get yourself out of debt. You know, once you do that, and it might take you five years, you know, at least get down to where you just have a house payment or, or just a rent payment. And, you know, if you, you save up, let's say $5,000 or maybe you inherit some money and you take that money and you, and the, the best way to do it, if you want to, if you want to get into this kind of real estate, you know, do rental properties, you buy a duplex or you buy a fourplex. And for those who don't know what a duplex is, that's a, that's a building that has two separate apartments. Uh, a, a fourplex has four apartments. Now from there, all you have to do is if the easiest way to get into that is, you have to move into it, okay? And when you move into it, you can get what's called a first-time home buyer loan from your bank. Because it's a first-time home buyer, you get a really low interest rate and you get a really low down payment. So you can actually get by with only putting three and a half percent down. Now you can't normally do that. Normally banks want 20% or 15%. But because it's first-time home buyer and you can do that every three years, First time home buyer, you only have to put three and a half percent down. So if you buy a hundred thousand dollar house or duplex, you only have to put thirty five hundred dollars down. It's not a lot of money. You know, you crunch your life down. You make you live like a minimalist for a while. Sell off everything you don't need in your house. You know, old furniture you don't use anymore. Old TVs, old computers, and old phones. You know, you get rid of your shit. That's how people get how they become millionaires. You got to get rid of the stuff you don't need. So you, you buy yourself a duplex, right? And you're going to make want to make sure you have somebody go through the house with you that knows what they're doing. Somebody who's a plumber or electrician or builds houses for a living, you know, if a buddy of yours or a family member, have them go with you so that they see the things that you're not going to see. Because you're going to be looking at things like, oh, the, it's got pretty walls. And they're going to be like, oh, it's got bad plumbing. It's leaking here and here. Or the, the pitch of the the dirt is wrong on the side of the house and the water is going to get in the wall. You know, there's things that they're going to see that you're not going to see. So you got to make sure you do that. When you finally find a property that's decent and nice, you want to make sure you get a good deal on it. So you want to always have all the apps you can possibly download onto your phone and watch property values and watch the areas. Cause you want a good area that's safe. People like safe and next to schools. That way, if they have children, they can have their kids go to school and it saves them a lot of money and a lot of time and they feel safe and people want to feel safe. So let's say you find a piece of property. Let's say you buy a $120,000 uh, duplex and you want to rent that out. Now, how do you calculate out how much rent you need to get in order for you to make your mortgage on that place and to... Uh, and to make a little bit of money off of this. So they have to, what's called the 1% rule. Basically what it is is you need 1% of what you paid for the house or the, the apartment building. So if you paid 120,000, you need $1,200 of income uh, per month. So that $1,200 will cover your mortgage, the insurance, PMI insurance, if, if, if you have it, and it will cover, um, like the property management, because you're going to have to hire a property management, unless you're going to cut the grass or you're going to make the tenant cut the grass. And then whatever money's left over from that. So let's say your payment's $900 and you're taking in $1,200. So you got $300 left over. You put that money into an, a separate account and you keep building that up just in case anything bad happens. Let's say, you know, you get a water leak, you have to have a plumber come out or the toilet gets plugged up and they, and they got to clean the toilet. So you got to have some extra money in, a, in a, an account for that. And you wait till you get thousands in there before you ever start taking any money away from that. You know, once you have, say, $10,000 saved up in there, then, yeah, you know, you can start take drawing money off of your income off of this rental property. But all this time, 
your tenants are making your mortgage payments on this. So it's a win-win. You're making the mortgage payments. You're going to have, uh, and then you're going to have a little bit of income come in every month too. And then after, after a while, you can take out, uh, take your money out of the, out of that building. All you have to do is go to the bank and say, Hey, I want to have it reappraised. I have a renter in there, two renters in there. Um, it's rented, fully rented. And they're going to say, okay, it's worth a little bit more. So we can give you like a $5,000 credit line or $10,000 credit line. And you use that money for your next down payment on your next property. And that's how people do this. And it's the same thing Donald Trump did for years and years. And his business partners all did the same exact thing. They get four or five houses bought, eventually five, 10 years down the road, they sell them. They buy something bigger, uh, a dupe, uh, a apartment building or a hotel. It's the same concept. And that's how all these people you see online, they do it. It's not that hard. It just takes a little bit of crunch time. You have to put in the effort. And yeah, you're going to deal with some shitty people. There's going to be renters and tenants that that act like the nicest people in the world. And then when they move in, they're going to destroy the place. And you're going to have to have a little bit of money saved aside for that. You're going to have to assume that, you know, I might have to paint this down the road or I might have to replace something or fix a hole in the wall or it's just going to happen. Uh, you know, it, it's just part of the deal. And uh, that's why you have to make sure and do run background checks on everybody uh, before you rent to them. Uh, best thing I always say to people, Go out and look at their car. Like, just walk by their car first as you're going to meet them. Look in their car. If the car is shitty, full of dirt, nasty, you don't want to rent to them. Because they're going to treat their car worse, probably as bad as they treat their house. And that's a good way to tell how, how they live. They got a nasty, shitty car. They're In the inside, they're probably going to have destroy your house. So, if you have any questions, please leave some uh, messages down in the comments. Make sure you like it and subscribe. And uh, I'll keep trying to pop out some some new content for everybody. Have a great night.